Drop the city council order Monday, November the 28th, 2016. Call the roll, please. Barkdale? Yo. Canada? Yes. Paul? Yes. McGuire? Here. McManus? Here. Mizell? Here. Short? Yes. And Ted? Here. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for prayer. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Dear Heavenly Father, we come tonight thanking you for each and everything that you do for each one of us. Be with this council, dear Heavenly Father, that each and every decision we make here will be for the betterment of the community. Be with our nation, dear Heavenly Father. Be with our armed service personnel, not only on foreign grounds, but here in the United States. Guide and direct their lives, bring them safely home to their families. Be with the ones in the community, dear Heavenly Father, that have lost loved ones this past week. Be with the sick. Be with the caregivers. We ask in that precious name. Amen. 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 We have a motion to approve the minutes of the 11 28 16. Moved by Mr. Hall, second by Mr. McManus. Call the roll, please. Barkdale, yes. Canada, yes. Hall, yes. McGuire, yes. McManus, yes. Mydell, yes. Short, yes. and Taylor. Yes. Thank you. First item on the agenda, citizen request. <coughs> Having none, will the first items on the mayor's report will be on the amended agenda to adopt the resolution concerning to assessment of collection agreement. Consignment. Consignment, yeah, consignment. And I believe everybody had a copy of it in the amended agenda. If not, does anybody need one that we should do? Need a motion to adopt. So moved. Moved by Mr. McManus. Second by Mr. Hall. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? No. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. Thank you. Now we need a motion to adopt resolution consenting to assignment of transfer station agreement. I'll make that motion. By Mr. Hall. Second. I'll second. Who do you want to give it to? Mr. Barber. I'll make one more guess that way. It changed a little. Oh, Rick did change that a little bit, I guess, today. It, Would you have it changed? It did. The, uh, the investors actually um, are borrowing some of their money that they're putting into the new company and all. And so one of the things that their bank uh, or their lender uh, wanted was uh, that they could assign their contract. Uh, there's two kinds of assignment. There's an assignment for operational purposes. You assign it from one company that's going to operate, fulfill the contract. There's an assignment of a contract, kind of like an assignment of a leasehold interest or something, which operates as uh, part of the collateral. In other words, Bulldog Systems operates the transfer station, they make money, that, that cash flow, if you will, is what's assigned to their bank. So uh, the investment company came through this afternoon and said they needed that in there. Uh, it doesn't affect our rights in any way, it's just they're pledging whatever money they make yeah. off of it. They're, mo they're pledging their money to pay back their loans, what it boils down to. So uh, in those names that you see in there, 
that uh, ironwood mezzanine and ironwood mezzanine two and three those are private equity funds that are financing this for the guy that came here from pittsburgh is what it is so uh, that's that's what that boils down to it doesn't change anything it, they're all still the same terms of the contract are still the same duration of the contract still the same all that stuff stays the same from March day before so we do have a motion by mr hall we do have a second by mr barfield call the roll please Barfield, yes. Canada, yes. Hall, yes. McGuire, yes. McManus, yes. Mizell, no. Short, yes. and Taylor. Yes. Thank you. We do have Mr. Hansen here. Dan, you want to say anything? No, I um, actually the oh, I'm sorry. The um, you know, the company that is coming to to invest in our company um, is going to bring a lot of expertise, allow us to grow. Uh, more than we have with the financial means that we have from our cash flow, um, we've already um, we've already uh, tied up uh, six newer trucks in what we have. So along with um, some of the expertise, they're also going to allow us to have the capital to to grow the company more than we have over the over the last eight or nine years that I've been here. Um, I'm still going to be the contact person. I'm still going to be the manager. And actually, as you'll see on there, I get a little piece of the pie this time. So I'm going to have some equity in the company. Mm -hmm. So that uh, for after 10 years of, of my time, I'm, uh, I, get, I get to be a voice in the, in the whole thing other than the manager. Mm -hmm. So and I appreciate you guys uh, allowing us to do that, being the, the largest, uh, one largest uh, city contract we have. And then when you tie the transfer station in, that's, that's a lot of revenue that, that we generate from the city of Metropolis. And we appreciate it. One thing I might mention, uh, just a bit of background on the gentleman that was here in, in his company. Uh, he's done this multiple times over, and typically, as he told us, he's in the process of putting together anywhere from five to seven of these entities, which he'll operate uh, independently as for about five years. Then what he typically does is he packages all this, and he takes it public, and it becomes a public company, kind of like Republic or others. It puts a lot of capital into a company. From our standpoint, it it makes it a long-term solid future if, it, if we if we go that route it also make it also means we deal with a company that is very competitive and can afford to be very competitive down the road somewhere when we look at this again so um, uh, we, we as Dan says they put a lot of money into this they put a lot of equipment into this we keep state-of-the-art equipment and um, uh, again we have there's a big company down the road that basically keeps us very competitive uh, so that's all I want to add. Sounds like a win-win situation. Yeah, it will. I think it can be a very good opportunity for us. Good. It, it will be them. It will give them the opportunity to be more competitive than they probably they've ever been. So uh, that's a good thing for us. It just drives the cost down on our customers a little bit. And that's what we're looking for. Right. So next item is uh, is strictly an update on the acknowledgement of a resignation of Mr. Ed Bridges from the Metropolis Public Library. Uh, Ed has been a very, very uh, uh, integral part of the growth of the, hospital, of the uh, library. He's, uh, he's, he's been a face uh, that has actually grown uh, with the uh, early library and the remodeling to the where we are at today, and uh, so what we will do now is just acknowledge uh, Ed's present on our uh, library board for you know almost forty years. That's a long time, and uh, what we will wait now for a uh, what we allow uh, the board to do is they'll actually uh, bring forth. They'll call me probably and uh, bring two or three names and we'll sit down and talk about it. Uh, I believe it functions uh, well down there to let them uh, bring something back to us. We'll discuss it and then uh, approve a recommendation from their board uh, and we'll move forward from that. But anyway, it, uh, it is, like I said, uh, we'll miss it. It's done a good job down there. 
next item is we're just going to try to keep you updated as we go along council meeting can council meeting so just keep it in your mind that we will be bringing uh, we actually did get two companies I think one is uh, from the preliminary talks that we've had with them I believe one is a little better uh, not much different cost wise and stuff but there is a little bit of difference of what each company brings for the recycling program on that so uh, we're going to wait till after Christmas someplace in January probably uh, give everybody a chance to get their new televisions their new uh, computers and uh, whatever they get electronic and uh, work out a system here this this company do, does have a recycling thing they they classify it as any electronics with a tail, which is a plug-in. Uh, I told them we don't have to worry about the white goods too much. Uh, we actually can set them to the curb, and it won't be but about uh, three and a half minutes till that'll be gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but we do have a problem with the electronics. Uh, on our side, our computers are. Uh, we're going to update ours. We're going to start that in January. We certainly want to make sure that we have the opportunity to get rid of everything we've got. The county, uh, by being here in the city, we're going to give them the opportunity. It won't be for county residents uh, at this time uh, unless something changes, but we will uh, give the county uh, government the opportunity to, uh, to actually do away with ours. <coughs> Another thing, too, Mr. Mayor, is that we might think about even waiting if we're going to wait till the first year to even wait till the last and Super Bowl thing. Because that week is the biggest week for TV sales. <laughs> in the end of the you want, certainly want to wait long enough to get with what's sitting around and what the new ones is, so that'll be fine. Well, I mean, I'm just bringing it up there. I won't be buying a new television personally to watch the Super Bowl, but anyways, I guess there's people to do. So that's a good thing. Next item. Oh, in still in the mayor's report, we probably will possibly need a uh, water light and street and a uh, finance on our uh, tax levy. Uh, probably maybe December the 7th, which is on Wednesday. Uh, so we'll, we may be having that. And just We'll just have to wait and see what it is. But I do know we need one for the tax levy. And uh, it is time for our uh, David Andreas probably will want to come. Uh, we do have one year left on our uh, contract. With her company, so we will have. Uh, he may want to come down and tell us where we're standing for the next year on our contract and where it's at there. So, anyway, that uh, will probably be December the second. And after, uh, I think uh, one amongst us is going into the uh, big realm of retirement and things. I think uh, Mr. Hall. I think has got. <laughs> one more working day with his company and then he's just going to be at our leisure guys so we can just beat up on him just pretty good and stuff like that and uh it uh just for the bit cheap too yeah uh, 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 he uh he can caulk too don't he I yeah i know how to use the caulking gun yeah. too <laughs> you know i do want to put a thank you out uh, uh we mentioned just briefly the other day but The sewer separation has been, uh, as you know, down on the lower part of uh, Broadway, and I do want to personally thank Mr. Uh, Short. He has uh, spent s several, all together, several hours down there. His expertise in the East End, which he, uh, or the West End, he's lived down there the biggest part of his life, has been very beneficial to Mr. Uh, Bill down there of uh, uh, locating this and uh, some things are on maps now they are on maps but there was several down there that the only way you uh, you pretty well knew and, and Chuck was very helpful to Bill down there on uh, you know locating some old water lines and sewer lines and uh, we do want to thank Chuck for that so 
fixed item corporate counsel report. He's ready to show. Thanks, Mary. Uh, first thing I wanted to note, because my wife told me to, uh, and I'll just do what she says first. Uh, community center, we got some rain that did not leak, so the roof, the roof did well today. Okay? Uh, it's the first test. Um, the uh, uh, other thing I, I put on there, update on Fair Labor Standards Act court decision. Uh, I know over the last year I've kind of probably uh, hounded this point of this, there were some changes coming in the Fair Labor Standards Act regulations that the Department of Labor puts out and then enforces. And um, these have to do with the overtime rules and who's qualified to receive overtime. And uh, there has traditionally been a three-part test. And uh, the, uh, the first part is the, uh, the dollar amount of the salary. The second is the salary basis the person is paid. The third is uh, do they fall into one of three categories, uh, executive, administrative, or professional. Or, and there's a computer uh, category, too, also. Um, and uh, uh, what has changed, uh, at least according to what was supposed to have changed, was um, this initial test. And you, by the way, you have to meet all three tests. You meet the salary, you meet salary basis, and you meet the classification of your job. And that's based on job description and job duties. Uh, if you meet all three, you're exempt from the rules. You don't qualify for overtime. If you don't meet one, any one of those, then you qualify for overtime. And purpose of the regulation was to raise the very first test, which since 2004 had been like $23,000. And the regulation proposed that we'd raise it to $47,400 and some change. And uh, as you may have heard, uh, that regulation was set to go into effect December 1st. And in a number of employers, it was going to affect, uh, even governmental employers, it's going to affect people that have been classified as managers, if you will. Um, because uh, they wouldn't meet the first test. And so, uh, uh, in many cases, the, the difference between what they make now and what that 47,000 would have been is too much to justify bumping up that you just simply have, you have to work with them about maybe there's a, you can go to hourly, you can remain salary, but still be non exempt. So, you have to have an hourly rate calculated and have an overtime provision. They have to do time cards or punch clocks or things like that. And it was, you know, Oddly enough, I had a, a couple other clients that brought this up to me as well and said that they had more people affected potentially by it, and it was definitely going to have, a, have an effect on morale because people that are used to not punching a time clock don't want to punch a time clock. They consider themselves management. They don't want to do that. Well, in any event, there was a challenge filed to the regulation uh, in, the court, in a district court, U.S. District Court in Texas, and the court last week granted a preliminary injunction against this regulation, finding that the regulation was uh, exceeded the authority of the Department of Labor. Um, the court found, essentially, that this increase that went from 23 to 47 should have actually been adopted by Congress and was not within the authority of the Department of Labor to impose that. So, um, for now, at least, um, this regulation, you might say, is state. Nobody's going to jump up and say, okay, you have to do this immediately. There are a number of alternatives. Since it was injunctive relief, Department of Labor or any of the states that were made parties could appeal, okay, and they have a certain period of time to appeal. They could file a motion for reconsideration um, and then appeal. Um, or they could take it back, go back to the drawing board, and potentially uh, uh, either ask Congress for relief or they could go back to the drawing board and try to draft a, an amendment that uh, would meet what the court said. Um, for us, in looking at this, we had potentially uh, a couple positions that were affected, and uh, uh, but also in looking at it, one of the things that I had to do was also look at some of our salary people that were going to be above the threshold, because I and I actually ran into this with another client too. That's people that are above, but they might not meet the duties test out here. Okay, and we said, well. Is that significant? Yes, it is, because if you don't meet all three tests, then you're not exempt and you are subject to the overtime rules. Um, I don't profess to be an HR specialist by any means, although I've done a lot of it, but I usually handle it on a case-to-case -case from a legal standpoint basis. Uh, <coughs> what I had uh, suggested to the mayor, what we were planning to implement, and I think we should do anyway, uh, there's a... Uh, 
there's a lady that works here in town that's at the hospital and she works for them. Um, she has a bachelor's and a master's and all this stuff and she's done HR for years. Uh, John Douglas is her name. And I was and I talked to her and said, would you on the side be willing to look at a few of our positions just to make sure we got them, in your opinion, classified and give the city council and the mayor some advice? I said, better than my, I mean, I, I can give you legal advice, but one of these positions involves Parks and Rec, and I'd rather not be the one that says one way or the other. There may be some exemptions that apply, and I've asked her to look at that. And so even though the reg itself is kind of on hold for now, we don't know where that's going to go, I still think it's a, it's a good idea that we look at the duties test and make sure that the people we've got classified now as exempt really are exempt. Because even though they may be above that threshold, I can think of at least one, and there may be two positions or more that won't meet the duties test. Okay, in which case then we got to decide uh, going forward how do we deal with their hours and, and how do we deal with that, that position. Um, so um, we're not we're not we're not under a time crunch right now. But I'll probably, <coughs> like I say, I'm probably going to have Jonna come in and look at those positions. What she did out there was she actually interviewed people and then did some research on those positions and, and took that information and sort of compiled her list of what she thought who met the duties or who didn't meet. The because they had, they had some that were uh, above the uh, threshold, but it was questionable whether or not they met the duties. Uh, and they would have been above the threshold even at a higher rate. So uh, she's, she's, uh, she's got a pretty good background in this. She's done it before. Most people that have been in HR for any length of time, that's one of the big jobs they all do. I've, I've worked with others before, and they try to make sure that they've got everybody classified for now. And the, the, you might say, well, why is that important if they haven't done it before now? Well, regardless, with all the focus on this regulation, uh, everything, and I've been to a couple classes and I've done a couple, I've read a whole lot, there's going to be an increased uh, enforcement activity. You're going to see Department of Labor looking at doing, conducting wage and hour audits. And uh, so uh, we need to be prepared for that. And we don't, we don't really have an HR function here, and so we need, we need a little assistance to, to make sure we're on if we would get a wage and hour audit, because it won't just focus on one person, it'll go across the board uh, if that would happen. So uh, we want to be have it documented, how we got people classified, why, and then that, that will go along with sustaining any, uh, any audit that we might get. So we will be doing that, you know, just to find out where we're at. Is, uh, does that uh, in, entail any uh, money being paid to this person for a consultant fee? <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe it will be a small probably small, amount. like a small uh, amount. A minimal part will be. I would expect way less than we want the mayor spending for it. Well, I'm mean, expecting probably a few hundred. There ain't no problem. We don't, no, yeah, we don't need to. No. It, it, won't, it won't get any, co any place close to what we can do. We're, uh, yeah, it would, uh, I just think it'd be beneficial to have somebody that knows a little bit about and practices it daily right. to do that. Um, at least we'll know if it comes time, we'll know what we got to do. We know where we're standing. Yep. We, we'll know where we stand and changes we may need to make going forward. Because uh, if we have any that are, even though they're over, don't meet the test, we need to go ahead and get them changed out. Even that we won't have been stagnant that long. Yeah. It would be better that we be, prepared. be uh, ahead, of, exactly. ahead of the law yeah. instead of trying to scramble yeah. to exactly. catch up with it. Because yeah. even that first duty of the, the salary part, that's on a sliding scale. Next year, that might have went up to fifty thousand. That's Who not knows? guaranteed to stay there. Yeah, it's exactly. that re reoccurring scale that's, every year. Yeah. That's if it winds up ever getting sustained. That is the plan. Is they want to put it on a sliding scale where it goes up on a regular basis without any further intervention. So you're going to have to track it going mm -hmm. forward. Um, the uh, um, the uh, it's just one of those things that. Uh, we need to get it done. But like I say, for now, we, at least we're not in an emergency type basis to look at this. We do have a little time, and we'll be talking about it. Sure. We'll keep you informed as we move along with that. Anything else for the good of the cause, Mr. Abel? I don't think so. Committee reports. Waterline Street. Mr. Byfield. Yes, sir. sir. The Waterline Street Committee uh, held a meeting on November 16th. Now that we had uh, three items bring before the board, and we uh, thoroughly discuss these and prove these. I'll make a motion on the following. I'll make a motion to accept proceeding with the painting of sidewalks on Market Street of the Uptown area. I'll second that. And speaking to that, I did talk to uh, Johnny today, and uh, he is uh, 
he worked on sidewalks today. I told him, I said, well, it ought to be a little cheaper today because you didn't have to use as much water today. But he did work. <laughs> He did work on some of the sidewalks. He's got part of the uh, the Happy Hearts building painted. He's going to finish it up. Uh, he may not get it finished tomorrow. He's had to do some changes of some windows and some caulking and uh, some mortar work tomorrow. Uh, possibly we'll finish that up the day after. Uh, and you've already approved that one. And the reason I put this on there uh, for the sidewalks is when he... We'll cut the check. Linda, I'll have Linda cut the check. We will put the check in the vault, and the check will not be released until all the sidewalks are done. That way, if he if he gets gets it done in the middle of the week or whatever, he won't have to work for his wait for his money. But he is actually going to paint a small section in front of Happy Hearts, make sure that it looks. Uh, right, that building there is going to be a neutral color, uh, kind of the color across the street. That way, we'll be able to tell if it's what we really want. So, uh, I appreciate that. So, we do have a motion, we do have a second. Call a roll, please. Barksdale? Yes. Canada? Yes. Paul? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. George? Yes. And Bates? Yes. Thank you. I will make a motion to suspend the rules and place an ordinance approving the cash for our lease. A property upon its passage. We do have a motion. We do have a second by Mr. Short. It's going to be 201625. Call the roll, please. Barkdale? Yes. Canada? Yes. Paul? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. Thank you. I will make a motion we adopt an ordinance to approve the cash farm lease of property 2016 26. 25, I'm sorry. Second, Sam's short. Call the roll, please. Yes. Canada. Yes. Paul. Yes. McGuire. Yes. McManus. Yes. Mizell. Yes. Short. Yes. And Taylor. Yes. Thank you. Mayor completes our report. Thank you, Mr. Barfield. Thank you. Next item, Park and Recreation, Mr. Taylor, sir. Sir, Mayor, uh, we have, we discussed uh, Car and Spear Corporation to replace the filter media in the filter, and they gave us a price of 12600 but I was noticing in this letter, do we need to incorporate in the motion about the filter lateral inspection being, you know, the cost if there needs to be repairs would be on top of that, and also do we have a place to for them to dump the sand? Yes, we're going we we we're going to take care of that. Okay. Uh, and that, uh, I think the cost of the, removing that sand was like eight hundred and sixty dollars, or but I I told uh, Mr. we'll take care of that. Okay, very good. So on. Um, uh, all right, they said on that one. But, uh, we've got so do, do we places. also want it to incorporate into the motion uh, that if the they find associated. Them, yeah. Cost. Okay. 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 Uh, this is this is for the pool and the water filtration system, or they call it the filter media. And I make a motion to accept hiring the Stir Corporation to replace the filter media and the filter system at <coughs> the city pool in the amount of twelve twelve thousand six hundred dollars, and also to approve any necessary repairs that they may find. I'll second that. Most of the time, Spears, through the years, has been very, very, very um, cooperative with anything that needs to do. And many times, if it takes a part, a piece, whatever, uh, they will actually allow our men to actually, re if, it's, if we're capable of replacing that, and, and uh, of course, we'll have to buy the, the material and stuff like that. So uh, there shouldn't be much associated with that unless there would be something major. If it is... Uh, I certainly, before I do anything, will call and let you know. So we do have a motion. We do have a second. Call the roll, please. Yes. Canada. Yes. Paul. Yes. McGuire. Yes. McManus. Yes. Mizell. Yes. Short. Yes. And Taylor. Yes. Thank you. Next item. The industrial Committee. Mr. McManus, sir. We, we had one thing come out of the Industrial Committee meeting the other day. 
And it was, uh, I'll make a motion to accept proceeding with Max Russell at the industrial park. We decided that would be a benefit to the city, him, and the county. I'll second. We do have a motion by Mr. McManus. We do have a second by Mr. Barfield. Call a roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. Thank you. And we did, uh, we had one other item in that industrial committee on, uh, on a project uh, uptown. I, I have not heard anything uh, from that, so we'll just... Uh, wait until we do get some kind of a confirmation back from the individual if not we will be bringing it back uh, to move forward with something else so next item ordinance committee mr short sir right, first two items already had a first reading i'll make a motion to adopt an ordinance authorizing the lease of properties acquired with the fema money second second by mr canada We do have a motion, we do have a second discussion. And I will say that we will have more when the, uh, it gets out, but we do have uh, probably at least uh, six individuals <coughs> that actually adjoin the, the properties that are interested in leasing that piece of property for the, the lease and we will have to be taken care of again. Right. So we do have a, Motion, we do have a second. Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. Thank you. Next item is to adopt an ordinance amending the sick leave benefit policy of the city of Metropolis. I make that a motion. Second. We do have a motion by Mr. Short. We do have a second by Mr. Barfield. If there's no discussion, call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. Thank you. And the last item is just a first reading. I think we all have it in our packets on an ordinance adopting Medicare Part B premium cost reimbursement policies. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Short. Department heads. Chief Massey? Nothing at this time, sir. Chief Morris? All good, sir. Nothing at this Frank? time. This time? This time. Oh, okay. It's quiet. It's yeah. very quiet. You, you dodged a bullet with Frank down there. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing on his <laughs> He said it's this time. He's quiet. Yeah. He's coming. He's got notes on the pump in his pocket. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Old business. New business. Miscellaneous reports. Financial report. Need a motion for payment of <coughs> salaries, payroll, and contract bills. I'll watch it for a second. Motion by Mr. Hall. Second by Mr. McManus. Call a roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. Thank you. Next item, payment of miscellaneous bills. I'll make that motion also. Motion by Mr. Hall. Second by Mr. McManus. Call a roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Canada? Yes. Hall? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Yes. Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. We did spend the uh, morning this morning with the street sweeper. We went down uh, all of Metropolis Street, all of Market, Lower Ferry, Upper Ferry, uh, making sure that all our drains were open. And uh, with all the leaves that's fallen, it hadn't rained in what a month, month and a half. <coughs> and as far as I know, we did not have any uh, drainage issues whatsoever. So. Uh, a certain amount of that, I'm sure, uh, went into the ground, but there wasn't much went into the asphalt, so that's a good thing. Anything else for the good of the cause? Mr. Reed, you have anything for the good of the cause? Okay. All right. Reminders. 
as far as the reminders are, are already gone, gone away. So uh, I think the only thing we do have a uh, December the 3rd is the Christmas parade. December the 3rd is the Kiwanis Pancake Breakfast. And December the 10th is the Community Center Holiday Market Bazaar. Do the motion to adjourn. Thank you all for your time. Call the roll, please. Hartfield? Yes. Canada? Yes. Paul? Yes. McGuire? Yes. McManus? Mizell? Yes. Short? Yes. And Taylor? Yes. Thank you. Did a good job.